Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Rana McBerto. Well, your host. Thank you so kindly for being a part of the show. We're going to have a great show for you today, as usual, my friends. How are you doing? The bill was signed today. The bill was signed today. A lot of people are going to get some relief, needed relief. We need a lot more based on historical realities. But you know what? It's a great day because a lot of our fellow brothers and sisters are going to be taking care of the, the plight of not knowing if they're going to eat tonight, the plight of not knowing if they, they can be thrown out of their apartments, the plight of not knowing if they're going to have the resources to be vaccinated, the plight that they have, whether or not their kids are going to have where to stay if they find and get a job, the plight that, <clears throat> that they will have from just not having the means. That is that's been mitigated. The $1.9 trillion is a good down payment on progressive policies. Not giveaways, progressive policies. And I want you guys to know this. I want you all to know this, and I'm going to come and salute you guys in a minute. I want you guys to know this. Um, not one, not one, in as much as Republican mayors are thanking Biden. They're saying thank you for giving our cities, our states, the support that we need. There are 4.4 million people in Kentucky, and 4 million of them will get that $1,400 check or some of that check. 4 million of the 4.4 million Kentuckians and their senator, Senator Mitch McConnell, voted no. For every one of my Republican brothers and sisters, please remember this. Please remember that politics had been played with your well being because this is not a bill for Democrats, this is not a bill for Republicans. This is not a bill for anarchists, socialists, communists, fascists. This is a bill for every single American who is in the middle class and falls under a level that this country does not generally take care of. So it's important for you all to know that while many Republicans who are going to be benefited by this, not only because of the 1400 there are a lot of middle-class, high-end Republicans and Democrats alike that they may think, well, I didn't get a $1,400 check, so this wasn't really for me. The economic activity that will be generated by this bill will make many a rich executive bonuses and more. It will put many of these executives that were on the path to ascension, but that wouldn't have made it because the economy wasn't there to support you. You will now be supported not because your boss thought it was okay, but you will be supported because Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, and Democrats passed a bill that made the economy whole in such a manner that you will continue to maintain your job, your bonuses, and more. So there are many people out there that are thinking, well, it's for those people. Well, by the way, it's most people, right? At least 85 million people or more are going to be benefiting from those $1,400 checks. But it's important for you to know, as a Republican that does not support these guys because of ideology. That much of what's going to occur in this country going forward for the next two years, you should be saying, thank you very much, Democrats. Thank you very much, Joe Biden. And you don't have to say it aloud. You don't have to say it in front of your friends. But you must understand that had Mitch McConnell been the person in charge of this bill, much of what you are going to and will attain under this bill 
would have been for not. I didn't prepare this that I want to put on the screen here, but there is a, a, a speech that was given on the floor yesterday that I thought deserved some mention because it is very important that you understand that. And I'm putting it on the screen right now. That picture on the screen that you see right now, when the tax cut scam of $2.3 trillion came about, you see that big red line? Those are who benefited from that particular bill. That is who got support. Most of the support went to the top 20%. Most Americans were left out. They didn't tell you that. They may have said, oh, you got a couple of dollars in tax breaks. They got billions, but you got a couple of dollars in tax breaks. But you know what? The couple of dollars that Donald Trump gave you back in the tax break went right back into the increase in health care, the increase in prescription drugs, the increase in all these other things, fees that you had to pay. So they gave you a teaser and they took your money away. Now, the bill that, support, that is supported by Democrats, this particular bill, most of the assets, most of the capital from this bill this is what it looks like, okay? Hard-working Americans are the ones who actually went ahead and did that. And when one says actually tax cuts helped pay debt, that statement may be somebody's personal debt, but those people who receive the tax cuts, they didn't have a problem paying debts at all. So people, I want you guys to understand this. Whether you're a Republican or Democrat, most of you, most of you, whether Republican or Democrat, you're hurting financially. Whether you're in the barrios, the ghettos, or Appalachia, you are hurting. Don't let ideology, do not allow ideology to have you make the wrong decisions. Come 2022, realize that much of what's in this bill expires. And if you want to get back to what we have on the train that we have been on for the last 40 years since Reaganomics began, where you have been pilfered, they have pilfered you and told you, look at that other guy. He is the one taking your money. They've been lying to you. They have been lying to you. Let's go ahead and take a call from 828-828. I think you're on. Come on in, my friend. Hi, Egberto. It's Hope in North Carolina. Can you hear me? Of course I can hear her. Is this my good friend, Hope? Yes, yes. Talk and to I, me, my friend. I'm Talk so, to me. I'm so glad that you're talking about the stimulus bill because the the contrast that you put out in your show is just so incredibly appropriate. The last stimulus bill, in my mind, was really sort of the white supremacist stimulus bill, and this one is not. Exactly. And you know what, yeah. what Hope, what we have to do, you know what, you know, um, uh, my wife was telling me, she said, why is it that Democrats are so quiet? That's what she kept telling me. She said, when you look at what is being done why are they so quiet? Why aren't they saying all these great things that are supporting everybody? And it's not just for Democrats, I hope. It's for everybody. It's incredible. But, you know, there's some great provisions um, in this bill for black farmers. Um, I dabble in agriculture yes. here in uh, North Carolina. And there's some really strong elements of infrastructure. And it's just such a record-breaking situation i mean for to me it's a huge huge score for not only joe biden but also just for the message about you know helping disadvantaged people because everybody who criticizes this seems to be in a fog of some sort i mean it reminds me of the same fog that people get in with the monument because as you know, I've been working on the Confederate monument here oh, in yeah, Rutherford County. Oh, you did a County, lot of work on that, yes. 
Yeah, and we have several monuments that since I talked to you about it last, we've had a few come down. But it's like, you know, when you, I mean, whether you get into a discussion of Meghan Markle and how the media harped on her, I mean, let's just face why they harped on her, okay? They harped on her because she was black. Yes. yes. I mean, let's just say it plain. And we lost Vernon Jordan last week. I don't know if everybody listening knows who Vernon Jordan was, but he was a prince and he was what Rosa Parks was to basic civil rights. I mean, he was to Wall Street and he was a hero. And I'm just, you know, this bill kind of reminds me of that larger fight against supremacy because in the local game with this monument, People who try to defend this monument out here, it's like, you know, you're defending some kind of a prize goalpost in a playoff game between Duke and Chapel Hill in the Final Four. It's like you're worshiping, you know, Jefferson Davis, who led like 700,000 people to be killed. I mean, it's the biggest mind fog that I've ever seen in my entire life. And maybe I have a perspective on it because I'm an older person, but I think it's BS. Well, you know something, Hope, uh, like I tell a lot of people like yourself, uh, Hope, you give me hope. Because the, tru- <laughs> the, the, truth, the truth of the matter, Hope, is um, uh, I, I, I am writing, or, or I'm going to play a piece that I did with, I uh, interviewed with Neil Aquino that I'm going to play. Uh, it's a 10-minute piece that I did, segment of, that I did with Neil Aquino, 28 minutes with Neil Aquino, and I'm going to play the 10-minute segment. And in there, I, I, I think this is a clip where I actually talk about mobs. And the thing about it is, as people listen to p- like somebody like you, okay, you're, you're a, you're, you are of the demographic, you're a white woman, and you give a lot of white women permission to really expand on, 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 on the, 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 the information that they get that is on the negative side. You get a ch- they, they see somebody like them who actually thinks. And you give them permission to actually say, ah, that's the other side. And I was talking to Neil Aquino about that and telling him, you know, uh, these are the heroes we need. We need a whole lot of heroes. We need heroes of every stripe, heroes in every domain. And you are playing your very, very important part in there as well. So, I mean, uh, I'm I'm telling you, this this is a full-fledged match. And having you on the team and having many others on the team is what's going to take. Well, thank you so much for saying that. And I think what I'm trying to remember, even though I tend to whine and complain and get in a bad mood about it, is it's it's so important not to necessarily personalize it against one person. Sometimes I have trouble personalizing it against one person. And I don't think that that's the way forward. And so that's why I come in and I listen to your show because you're really good about that. So I'll I'll jump off and listen to the rest of it, but I just wanted to share that with you. Well, listen, Hope, you know, uh, this is your home. Love having you all the time and you keep calling. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thank you so kindly. By the way, is it, is it okay if I go ahead and just go and show folks who Hope is on the screen? Oh, you can do that. Sure. All right, excellent. Yeah. Hey, guys, the, the person that you're just listening to uh, right there, and let me see if I can pull her up real quick on the screen, one of our one of our heroes. And anybody becoming our hero, you know that is exactly what you are, our heroes. <laughs> uh, here's, here, here's, here's Hope, our hero. Anyway, um, look, guys, let me tell you something. I'm, order, I'm coming to the, to the screen and read a few of your comments right now and, and, and say hi to all you guys right now. Let me go ahead and get to that. Okay, para ver, para ver, para ver. Okay, welcome aboard, uh, of course, Hope. Welcome aboard, Hope, Hope Bleeker. Welcome aboard, Paul Fleming. Michael Rudnan says, the House just passed a sweeping and bipartisan bill to boost unions. These, there are three huge benefits to the Protecting the Right to Organize Act of 2021 Pro Act uh, going forward. First, it pushes unions as a bulk work against corporate dominance. Second, it may create the uh, opportunity for Democrats to call out Republicans and end the broken Senate rule that is the filibuster. Third, it opens the way for environmentalism and green energy by collective bargaining for cleaner workplace environments. There are a lot of, look, the Powell Manifesto did a magical thing. It turned America against unions. It used a, a few bad deeds that few unions did 
to try to turn America against unions. Of course, they don't tell you all the bad deeds that corporations do on a constancy, right? But as far as unions are concerned, oh, they're bad and they've turned, they've created such an aura around you, a negative aura around unions that many people who unions would benefit have turned against unions. The truth of the matter is the corporations have unions. They don't call them unions. They call them they call them uh, this uh, like the the, biz, the better business not better business bureau the chamber of commerce that's a union the machinist union uh, the machine the, the 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 machine manufacturers union these are all unions not called unions but they work together so that together they can have power to do something that is what each um, each each person each worker should be able to get together so they could work together against the union. That, that over $200 billion that Jeff Bezos has is not Jeff Bezos' money. It is yours. It is the money that you made that he didn't pay you. That Jeff Bezos, I want, I, in, my, in the book, How to Make America Utopia, that I'm right, I was writing this chapter last night. Remember, the billions that Jeff Bezos has is yours. And how was it yours? That is the monies he decided to cheat you out of legally. People have a hard time understanding their worth. He would not have had that if you had not had worked for him. So when you look at rich people and say, how did they accomplish this? With your labor. That's how they did it. I want you guys to start remembering where the power in this country really lies. Brothers and sisters, it's with you. Second item from Michael Rudnan, a $60 billion surprise in COVID relief bill, corporate tax hikes, no objections. Democrats tucked in a trio of little notice tax hikes in the wealthy and big tax uh, and big corporations. One, tax, one takes away deductions for publicly traded companies that pay top employees more than $1 million. Another provision cracks down on how multinational corporations do their taxes. A third targets how owners of uni uh, uh, unincorporated businesses account for their losses. Now you know why the Republicans didn't really want it, because you went after their people. Trump's odds of getting away with tax fraud just took a nosedive. I'm not going to read that, but you guys can read it on your own. Uh, welcome aboard AVQ, Michael Rodnan, Paul Fleming, Bruce Pollard. Welcome. Thank you for being here, my brother. Julie Van Ostel, welcome aboard. Good afternoon. All she says from Lakeville, Minnesota. And there's Bridge MCP, our Bridge MCP from Long Island, New York, and the leader of our PDR Posse. Welcome aboard, Bridge. How you doing? Let's see who else is here. Bruce says, uh, warm up there today. I think he's talking to somebody else, but he's also saying we need to get busy and we have a lot more work to do. Yes, we do. Uh, who did I miss? Did I miss anybody on my way down? Julie, I think I got Julie. Uh, British MCP, I got Eric Hayes. Welcome aboard. $1,400 should be more, but nope. Yes, it should be more. Nanette Bird smith Hi, all. Today's a great day to have a great day, and you are absolutely right. Eric, it's more debt, but it's good debt. Uh, it is good debt. Why do you bring up Kentucky? Because Kentucky is a beggar state with somebody who wants to take away from everybody else. That's the reason I bring up Kentucky all of the time. Tech 777, welcome aboard. Uh, let's see, Michael Ronin says, Berto always worth reminding that the billionaire class made $3.9 trillion during June 2020, while the bottom 90% of earners lost $3.7 trillion. Thank you for bringing that out, uh, Michael. Now, I just called that out on air. And the reason I, call, I, I put those numbers out on air, I didn't know that, okay? I didn't, I didn't quite have those numbers in my head. I know, I know that there's something like that, but I trust the research that you do, sir. Uh, but please, uh, always kind of throw out the links like you always do as well, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see. Agree. Filibuster must go. Yes, it must go. Uh, Eric Hayes said, yes, pay debt to buy something. Michael Rodney, let's see what else have we got here. Uh, let's see who else is here. Michael Rodnin uh, did another nail to the coffin of Reaganomics. Absolutely so, my brother. Bruce says we have more work to do. Let's get on with it, and we will, and we will. Carl Cox. The Republicans want to continue the destruction of the vanishing middle class and the poor and benefit the mega-rich and mega-corporations started with President Reagan. And you know, voodoo economics, I, I wrote that in my first book, As I See It, Class Warfare, The Only Resort to Right-Wing Doom. Okay, Mark Smith, good evening. I think you're from the UK. You guys are going through some issues right now. Deborah John, welcome aboard. Egberto, although Democratic Congress passed $1.9 trillion, uh, where are the promises they made during the elections? Uh, again, Biden didn't make those promises. A lot of other Democrats do. It is our job to force the 
post your hands, and we will. Brian Sams, filibuster needs to go. Voting rights are in jeopardy. Uh, let's see. Carl Cox, I think I called you out already. Brian Sams says... Hello from Breckenridge, Colorado. I love Colorado. I, I actually went to Colorado and I did Pikes Peak. I rode down Pikes Peak on a bike. Notice I didn't say rode up. Well, the folks that I was with, they weren't interested in riding up, but we were all interested in riding down. Even though riding down, you have a whole lot of up hills that you have to do as well. Patricia de Galani, love you, girl. Hello, my dear Egberto. Como estas, my dear Patricia? Uh, let's see. Uh, para ver quién más. Paul Fleming, I think I called you out. All right, we'll see what happens in 2022. Okay, let's get back to business. Okay, hope I had you on for a while on the on the screen. Okay, let's see now. Um, para ver, para ver, para ver, para ver. What am I going to do? Oh, I didn't even introduce the show. I'm so excited about getting started, excited about buying. Let's go ahead and take a look at the show. Today, the show is Biden Science COVID Relief on 28th, on 28th Minutes with Neil Aquino. I, I, I let folks know I speak to everybody, including... Those who are called deplorables, because to me, they're not. To me, they're just folks that need to be spoken to. Roberto Luis, mi hermano favorito de Panama, como estás? At least is a good start to help both sides, right and left. You're absolutely right, Roberto. Okay, so Jayapal wants three congresspersons investigated. I explain why I speak to all, including, quote, Plorables on 28 Minutes with Neil Aquino. Neil Aquino is an activist here in Texas, in Houston. V always, he, he's been protesting against uh, Ted Cruz and, and Cornyn for the last two years, two or three years, every single Tuesday. Last week, he got over 200 people to protest out there as well. We have a lot of activists doing a lot of good work. I, I just love what's going on in this country right now. And for all we talk about, the white supremacists and all of that, that's just a whole bunch of folk that are dying and they see, they're watching the death, they're watching the death of that movement. Because there are a lot of people, we're all getting together and realizing we're all one, baby. And if you're trying all that crap, forget it, it's not going to last. It won't last. Anyway, let's go ahead and watch what was the event of the day. So you've written this book, we should speak to others. We've referenced your, um, the Starbucks, you speak to the people in your community as you speak to the people who call. Thank you for coming in. In the, uh, the weeks that this bill has been discussed and debated, it's clear that an overwhelming uh, percentage of uh, the American people Democrats, independents, or Republican friends have made it clear, the people out there, made it clear they strongly support the American Rescue Plan. Yesterday, with the final passage of the plan in the House of Representatives, uh, their voices were heard and ref reflected in everything we have in this bill. And I believe this is, and most people I think do as well, this historic legislation is about rebuilding the backbone of this country and giving people in this nation, working people, middle class folks, uh, people who built the country, a fighting chance. That's what the essence of it is. And uh, I'm going to have a lot more to say about that uh, tonight in the next couple of days and be able to take your questions. But in the meantime, what I'm going to do is sign this bill and uh, make the presentation tonight and then. Uh, there's going to be plenty of opportunities. We're going to be on the road, not only talking about what I'm talking about tonight is the impact on the virus and how we're going to end this pandemic. And we're going to talk at all the elements of the bill beginning uh, uh, Friday and Saturday and through the week. So thank you for being here. Got it. Thank you all. Appreciate it. That has, you have just watched, the reason I wanted to play that, the most substantive bill, the most substantive progressive bill passed in this country, likely since uh, Johnson and probably since, uh, probably, I, I wouldn't say Johnson, I, I, I would have to say it's probably since Roosevelt. 
the amount of stuff in that bill that's going to help a lot of people, that's going to bridge for a lot of people. You have a lot of people talking a whole lot of crap. You have a whole lot of people just saying, oh, this is not going to do this, or this is too much. My good friend, Eric Hayes here, he's saying, uh, Democrats haven't lived up to their... No, no, that's not the one. Uh, he, he mentioned something else that I wanted, because Eric is our, our, Eric is our verbose conservative here, and I like that he talks and he feels free to talk in here, and I like that you guys are all respectful to Eric. But Eric was sort of um, insulted when he says... Why is, uh, he, he, he made a, a point to say something about economics, and I wanted to, I wanted to tell Eric something about that he needs, that he needs to do. Because in this room, the one, the, the one great thing about this room is we have a lot of smart people in this room. A lot of smart people in this room. A lot of people who know economics, a lot of people who've taken economics. So he says, there is not much economic logic in this bill because close to $1 trillion still is unspent from previous bills. If you're going to make a statement like that, Brother Hayes, and you know I love you, you have to ask, what is it that the parts of the other bills that aren't spent, what is it in them and what are those parts of monies not spent targeted for? If you don't know that answer, then... Uh, you know, you're doing what people on the right do all of the time. And that is just make statements that are not based in fact, that they just pull out of this thin air. Now, we have people like Michael Rudnan, who does a lot of research. We have people like Bruce Pollard, who does a lot of research. We also have Bridge MCP, who does a whole lot of reading and finding articles for you. If you are unable to find the articles that tell you the truth, that educates you, and we all look for articles to educate ourselves as long as we know those articles are reliable, we read them. I suggest you have a great forum here. You have a forum here filled with intelligent people. Talk to them on the side. Send them a direct message. Welcome aboard, Linda Joe Kitsinger. Send them a direct message. Talk to them. Learn. We can all learn from each other. Don't make silly statements just out because you heard it on Fox News. As you can see, and as I've spoken of before, here are the reliability of these news. ON Network, not reliable at all. Fox News, not reliable at all. Newsmax, not reliable. And of course, you can come to EgbertoWillies.com and the reliability is very, very high. Not rated by me. Rated by an independent institution. And you know why? Because we have good people that we continue to listen to. We do our reading. We do our homework. And our sole purpose is to tell the truth. Nothing more. Not to try to fool you. Just to tell you the truth. Not my truth, but the truth. Period. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and uh, do my little quick thing here. Folks, if you're on YouTube, please consider joining our posse. Hit that join button and become a member of the PDR posse. Uh, if you're not seeing that join button, you can go to this link that I'm putting out there right now. It's called politicsandright.com slash YouTube. politicsandright.com slash YouTube. Uh, alternatively, you can also go ahead and support us by... Uh, getting our book that you see on the screen, As You See It, Class Warfare, The Only Resort to Right-Wing Doom. And I just put the Amazon link on that for you to get the, from which you can purchase the book. But if you want to get rid of the middleman, you can go directly to our store at politicsandright.com slash store, politicsandright.com slash store. Hey, pass the link on to a friend. Tell him, hey, buy this book from a good friend of ours. He has this program and he has real info to give you, so you can go to our store and get it. And by the way, you can get our t-shirts, you can get our, our hoodies, all that good stuff there. And you know, you can also get our mug. The mug designed by Bridge MCP, and you can get that mug right here. But let me put that mug on the screen. I like to play that sometimes. Uh, there is the mug designed by Bridge MCP. You can get it at that link there. And there you, you see we have Linda E. who bought it, as well as Norman Reynolds, who 
is another good friend, and many others. Hey, Roberto, you have that thing. Uh, go ahead and take a picture so I can put you in this list. And, and Bridge MCP, where's my pick? Bridge and all the others that have purchased the mug. A lot of you have purchased the mug. I want my picks. Where are my pictures, my brothers and my sisters? Where are my pictures? But anyhow, you can also support us at politicsandright.com slash Patreon. politicsandright.com slash Patreon. P-A-T-R-E-O-N is the way it's spelled. Or we like that good old PayPal as well. politicsandright.com slash PayPal. politicsandright.com slash PayPal. Okay. A friend of mine here, a very powerful activist in town. This is one of the most, what I, I mean, I have to call him a relentless activist here in Houston. A guy that I respect so much. He said, Egberto, I want you to be on my, I want to interview you on my show, uh, 28 Minutes with Neil Aquino. Neil Aquino is one of the largest activists here. And I said, of course, I'm honored to be on with you, brother. And there's a segment of the interview that I want to play because I want, I want, I want, well, you guys know this, but I'm going to play this anyway, and then we'll take it on the other side. Let's see, get to the right one. Here we go. So you've written this book, We Should Speak to Others. We've referenced your um, the Starbucks. You speak to the people in your community as you speak to the people who call from around the globe. You open yourself to up to other views. But in these last three or four years, not that it wasn't always there, has become a, a, a re-emergence or a more public emergence or more brazen speaking of these terrible words and thoughts. We've had a coup attempt. We've had this white supremacist president. Why should I follow your premise of reaching out? Before we get into some of the details of your book, given this shit that's happened, given the risk to democracy, if that coup attempt had been successful or police had joined it, why? I am why? so glad you asked about why. The truth of the matter is, I think Donald Trump was a blessing. You ever have that cut on a part of your body that it looks like it healed over and there's a slight thick skin on it. But if you ever uh, scrape it, you can see that the rat is still underneath or the, the raw is still underneath on that cut. And that's where we are as America. Liberals like to go ahead and talk about conservatives as, as being the racist part of, uh, of all of that. I'm going to tell you something and you may find this interesting. Some of the most vicious racism I've faced hasn't been somebody calling me the N-word but simply being invisible at a progressive convention. You went somewhere and they didn't, they didn't see you. They didn't hear you. Right. And, I, mm -hmm. and that is even more vicious than the other. The other thing that I can tell you, I can tell you that I went and I interviewed the, the family of Daniel Boone in West Houston at a tea party event. In Daniel. A, in Daniel Boone. Descendants of Daniel Boone. Yeah. West Houston. Yeah. I sure that I read a biography of him. There I am. I am talking to these guys, tea party and all of that. And in as much as I know the genuineness wasn't necessarily there, by the time we were done talking, they wanted to show me that they weren't racist. They were racist, but they wanted to show me they weren't. But by the time we were done, in as much as they are who they are, they got an understanding of black people, Latinos, and all of that, that they never knew. And you could see, I could watch them change the way in, in front of them because there was somebody when they said something silly didn't just come back and fight came back and said okay tell me exactly why you feel that way and when they realized that what was happening in them was ridiculous look donald trump did something that very few can do donald trump went into the carnal mind of white people that said remember if they ever come into the fold, they're taking something away from you. That's the only way Donald Trump gets 74 million votes, mostly white, because they think somehow something is being taken. Now, I wish there were more people who were willing to go up and say, I'm going to listen to you talk the crap, the belief that you have, and then ask you, what do you think is a birthright that you've had that I'm taking away? The reality is you've never had a birthright. You've been fooled for these all these years. And that's I go through a You've lot of that tricked. in my book. You've been fooled, yeah. <laughs> right. I go through a lot of that in my book. The people, you know, people think, oh, racism, black people getting hurt and all of that. Racism hurt everybody. And the truth of the matter, racism is what allow all them people in Appalachia to be poor. It allows all the pain that's going through white America right now. It's That's what's causing it. And in the book, I kind of explain some of that. And it's like, 
when we see the light, I have this term I use on my show. When we unite Appalachia, the ghettos and the barrios, it's a stereotype. But when we unite Appalachia, the ghettos and the barrios, we would have won the war because the idea is the plutocracy has to keep white people, black people, Latinos, and everybody fighting among each other so that we don't see where the problem really is. So there, there, was, a, there was a brief moment where uh, Robert Kennedy and LBJ thought that was the vision. You believe that that vision is, is still there. Oh, yeah. Look, let me tell you something. When I talk to people one on one, I see people's humanity. When you speak to people in crowds, what you see is a mob. All kind, there are all kinds of mobs. In other words, if I get a whole bunch of people together where peer pressure takes control, people lose their humanity to the goings of the herd. You know, we talk about trying to get herd immunity, right? Herd immunity is infiltrating enough people's minds with the kind of beliefs I talk about in, in let's say it's worth it. When I say it's worth it, that's what I mean. It's worth, it's worth going through what I go through with you know name calling and all of that if I think I'm going to plant a seed in somebody's head. Even if it doesn't immediately emerge, my thing is if I can create and replicate many, which there are many others doing this as well, uh, that into people's minds, people would get it. And if we get enough of the people believing or acknowledging these things, herd immunity again, right? Because suddenly when you are inside of your herd, where you would have had these stupid thoughts or where you would have had these racist thoughts, it looks so stupid. I mean, that, that is already in effect, right? You as a liberal, you as a white liberal guy, you hang around a whole bunch of uh, uh, people that are progressive, a, a, a lot of them. And in that herd, certain things look very strange when they do certain things. You are an advocate for true, for criminal justice, environmental justice, racial justice, social justice. You support all of that because you're, that's where your herd is. Let's crystallize your vision. You believe you have the capacity and you have successfully brought people to a better place. Yes. Is that cool? And then, and that will help keep us free because that'll keep us from the conflict that results otherwise. Yes. Okay. And so sometimes I feel, I look at 1492, 1619, Nicole Hannah Jones, 1620, Plymouth Rock, 1776, Reconstruction, the reaction to President Obama. And I have to admit, I, I, and then I look at an ecological crisis on top of it. And I, I have to admit, I, I, I'm not sure I see the way out of it. So you, you maintain that faith out of it. You were born in Panama. Yes, Central America. Does that give you a different perspective? What is, what is that immigrant experience and that immigrant experience from, from your neck of the woods give you? This stance that I'm taking I don't think is a stance based on my upbringing or where I'm from. I think this is developed. I think I was just as sexist. I was just as homophobic. I was just as a, I had a lot of my own isms. When I fought off my first ism, which I think was homophobia. You've that, been open I, about this. You, you often reference this. I, and, and because it, that is how deep it was. Where I, the part of the world where I'm from, homophobia, I mean, homophobia is, is real. So the reality is I'm genuinely not there anymore at all. I mean, it's not even in the carnality part right. of my thing. Right. And the same, have, it's same is with sexism. All, all these isms that I had, I overcame. They didn't happen by magic. They were intentional. It, it wasn't only logic. Logic says racism is stupid. And you can ask any racist and they'll acknowledge it's stupid. I mean, if, if I'm a black guy, and you're a white guy, you have a white sister, and there's a possibility if your white sister needed a heart transplant, you couldn't give her. And there's a possibility that me as a black guy, if I drop dead, and my heart is still usable, she could use it. Why the hell does racism mean anything if that's the, if that's the reality? It is stupid. It, intellectually, we know that. And, there's and there's we know an that. all the family episode where, where Archie got a blood transfusion from a black man. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was worried. Yeah. He was worried what it would do to him. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so when you, when you start, you, you, you first get the intellectual, right? And after the intellectual, when you get past that intellectual thing, you have to make it here. Well, here really means here, right? I mean, you, you get what I'm saying. So I, I get it. And my thing is to talk to people and say, listen, uh, it, it is, you have to be intentional with these things. And you also have to realize that these are the fears and the things that the powers that be use against us. Do you think Oprah and Trump are really big enemies? Hell no. Oprah and Trump. Think about it. You know, I saw Oprah's interview and they're talking about the racism at the palace and all that kind of stuff. 
But the truth of the matter is that this level that Oprah is, she may have problems at a shop in, 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 in France who doesn't know who she is. But ultimately, she was able to go by the shop and say, well, now you know who I am. We mistake a lot of times what the plutocracy, those in power, maintain by keeping us all fighting among each other uh, with what's really going on. The president of China and America and all of these guys, they break bread together. And they'll have their armies fight to get power. And then when it's all over, we are dead and they are sitting down at a table having caviar. And that, and, and you know, once, if, if we understand that, if we just understand that, a lot of our problems would be over. You know, we, we, if we get rid of all those issues, those side issues that really should be just side issues, we'll do fine. Um, Bridge says, she asked the question, I saw some question marks. Alberto, uh, what, what do you think changed when you went to college? You know what is interesting, Bridge? I think you're asking about uh, me. Let's see. Do you, when, actually, I, I want to make, tell me exactly what you're asking there. When you said, uh, wh what changed when I went to college? I don't know what, I want to specifically know what you're asking so that I, I can put the question in that, or the answer in that context. Nasif Hashim, welcome aboard. I want to use this media to appreciate and to recommend DR, what's that? Oh, the broken, uh, I don't know what that is. I have no idea what you're talking about, Nasif Hashim. Uh, Bruce says it will take, uh, so when, when you answer me, uh, Bridge, I'm going to answer your question. It will take more than two years to read the bill. How many people does it take to execute this thing? Thousands. But by the way, as far as reading the bill, uh, come on, they read it, read it in 10 hours, man. <laughs> I mean, now did they understand it? Probably not, because you know what bills are, right? Bills are the change in the code, and it has to, you have to go to some other code to see which one you're inserting here and deleting here. Have you ever re read a bill? It's complicated as hell. I just read the excerpts. Did you think your point of view on gays and women, it said that changed when you went to college? You know, that's a very good point. Here's the deal. Ironically, at the University of Texas, didn't change my views on, it wasn't the University of Texas that changed my view on women or homosexuality or anything like that. My homosexuality idea changed when I felt like an idiot when one person asked a question that I could have asked myself a long time. I was, on, I was on a business trip to China. We had just developed a product for a Chinese company, a login, login oil wells. And I said something derogatory about uh, gays. I couldn't be gay. I don't remember exactly what I said. But then he looked at me, and he didn't get mad at all. And I think he also probably helped in the way I handle issues. He said, Egberto, you're black. I'm like, yeah, no kidding. And then he said, could you change it? No, I can't, and nor would I want to. I like who I am. I, I love who I am. I, that doesn't stop me from loving who you are. He was a Chinese guy. Who you are and who anybody else is. And then he says, you know what is interesting? A gay person doesn't have to tell anybody they're gay. But you're asking them to satisfy, you know, and, and he get, went into a whole, we went into a dialogue. And on that 14 hour or more flight, actually it was, I don't remember how many hours, because we were going from, I think it was from Detroit to Japan. That's, that was going to be the first stop. Detroit to Japan, Japan to Singapore or one of those, Japan to, um, to Taiwan. And that whole flight, everything that he said just kept on going around in circles in my head. And you know, I'm a logical guy, I like to think logically. And by the time I got off the plane, I was a changed person. First of all, I realized that I was an a-hole, an idiot, a buffoon, all those good, all those negative things that I now put on every person who have these isms. That's who I was, you know. Uh, people want to know also, I get a lot of flack when I give racists uh, the second degree. I mean, when I, I, I give them an option, right? You know, I, like I always tell people I have friends who are racist and people will be, a lot of my black friends will be like, you damn fool, what are the, you know, they'll get on my case and, you know, all these kind of stuff. And some of these are the same guys that I would have heard say something about, you know, maybe how somebody of a different culture or whatever or had something to say. And I would say, what makes that different? And then they'll start, oh, well, it's history. We were in chains and it's there's institutional, and I'm like, Everything that you're just saying is true. Absolutely. There's institutional racism. All of that is true. 
as a black man, I have to work twice as hard to accomplish the same thing on the, in the aggregate. Not all the times, but in the aggregate, as a white person, as a black man, I have to work twice as hard. Even in, even in this new business that I've formed, I've compared issues with people doing similar things. I have to work twice as hard to garner less support. I have great supporters of all, all stripes. But what I'm saying, it is amazing. Uh, but, you know, we all have some sort of burdens. Women have to do certain things in corporate America because they're women. And until we break all these isms, that is what we're going to have. So while I understand all the concepts about uh, the different, uh, you know, racism and, and, and these, these particular issues, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get, I get it. But don't ever discount the humanity of any type of ism. Don't think that your pain when some when you know that what has happened was judged because of the color of your skin is any less so though than a woman who is judged because she is a woman and didn't attain that because she's a woman or because of some or a muslim who didn't attain something i mean don't discount the similarity in pain at all and that's what i think a lot of people have a tendency to do with their own acknowledgement of whatever prejudice is loaded against them. So um, I look at things very objectively in all, in all spots, right? And I don't want to discount the reality of how deep racism is in this country, but there are a lot of other isms in this country that are deep as well. There are some of them that have economic consequences. The biggest economic consequence of racism is black people uh, on a permanently, on a permanent less than with respect to wealth. That's why I support reparations. Because whether you came from a slave owner, as a white person, whether you came from a slave owner or not, much of your benefit came, or not, I'm not going to say much, some of your benefits came from that which was not afforded to a black person, a native person, etc. And until we get honest about all these issues, right? In other words, there are people who bought land in the country that was stolen from somebody who had rights to it, but he could never go to court and get it. We have all these things that are realities. And if we are honest about it, we can actually solve those particular problems. Let's see if there are any other issues that I need to catch up on here. Uh, global warming might be beyond humanity's capacity to remedy. The next five years will be telling. Yeah, there's, a, there's something that I, I want to say about global warming, though. Um, and this is something that I think we as environmentalists, we as progressives have to keep in mind. We want to get to zero carbon emissions for a particular reason. But we are going to also have to acknowledge that there are already permanent changes and we're going to have to find a way to mitigate those. And I sometimes I think enough of us haven't seen that, but who knows, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, let's see what else is here. Makes me wonder how many Trump voters are racist. I know that at least 24 million of them are. I don't know what percentage of Trump voters are racist. I don't know. I know a lot of them aren't. Hell, my sister's a Trump voter. My sister's no racist. I think she's misinformed. And um, so, I, and I know a whole lot of Trump voters as well who are not racist. But it was a racist act to vote for Donald Trump. It was a racist act to vote for Donald Trump. And why is that the case? Because you had allowed with your vote the possibility that a whole bunch of people that weren't white were going to be aggrieved. So I want all of my brothers and sisters who voted for Donald Trump, just thinking I am doing it for economic reasons or I just don't like liberals or I just don't like abortion or whatever reason you thought you voted for Donald Trump. It was a racist act. And, you know, everybody at some point in time may have 
effected a racist act. But that was one that could have had some serious consequences. And the funny thing about that is that racist act would have affected most of you who voted for Trump. That racist act is, would have affected most of you who voted for him. Because most of you who voted for him don't fall within the top 20%. And you have been aggrieved. It is amazing. Uh, let's see. Uh, what Eric is saying? Let's see. Uh, let's see. I, Eric said something about 10%. Of what, da, 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 da. Okay. Bridge replied to Eric. Eric, if you read the article, it states that the rest and the rest. So you can see it's not 10%. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not going to get into that, that part. But let's see. Global warming, the short version, Google uh, Keelan curve. We're burning more fossil fuels than natural gas can sink. The excess accumulating in the atmosphere causes warming. Yeah, now, I mean, I was listening to Bill Gates, and you know I don't like billionaires per se, but Bill Gates is trying to at least do some good stuff with his billions. And we are going to, you know, we are, we are also have test plants that are taking carbon dioxide out of the air. So we are, if we go ahead and start building thousands of these guys around the world, uh, we can also start mitigating. There, there are test pilots right now on huge scales taking carbon dioxide out of the air. So there are a lot of things happening right now. And we, we, still, we still have time. We just have to get the, to put it, I, I'll be nice. We just have to get the dummies out of office. And when I say the dummies out of office, I'm not apologizing in this case for being a bit uncivil. But at this point in time, they are dangerous, not just to themselves, but to us all. At some point in time, we have to stop making excuses for them. And, you know, uh, the, the funny thing about that is the person that would tell me things like this all the time is Norman Reynolds. They're like, Barry, you always make an excuse for those people. No. Okay, off subject. Waiting to make steak and shrimp on grill. Mine is wondering. <laughs> num, 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 num. I am allergic to shrimp. Yes, I said it. I am, I'm from Panama. Surrounded by water on two sides. The two biggest oceans surrounded on both sides. And I am allergic to shellfish. Can you be I can eat oysters though. I don't know how it works. I can eat oysters. Anyhow, anyhow, um, the our telephone computer just crashed. I'd never seen this computer crash before, but it just crashed. But I'm back on. If anybody wants to put in a quick call and say, hey, there's something I wanted to cover that you didn't, because the truth of the matter is I think I covered everything I wanted to cover today, other than actually I did not. I had a thing here of uh, Lula, Lula da Silva, the former president of Brazil, is back. And it seems like he's going to challenge Bolsonaro. Bol Bolsonaro, I think it's Bolsonaro. He's going to challenge him. The, the do it would be funny if, <laughs> it would be funny if Lula beats Bolsonaro because what we would have is two older guys beat kind of the younger guy, the progressive beat the fascist in either case. That would be amazing, wouldn't it? Anyway, we're getting close to shutdown time. Let me see if there are anybody else I need to salute. Please, folks, if you are on YouTube, consider clicking that join button and becoming a part of our posse. You can also become a part of our posse by going to politicsandright.com slash YouTube. You can also support us via uh, getting our book. As I Well, I, that's the other book. You can go ahead and support us getting this particular book. It's worth it. It's worth it. Uh, let me go ahead and see. Put that in there. It's worth it, people. How to talk to your right-wing relatives, friends, and neighbors. I just put the Amazon link in there. But you can also eliminate the middleman and go to our store. And I should say the middle person and go to our store. And that is the link to our store. You can get our mug designed by Bridge MCP by going to this link that I'm about to put on the screen. Uh, that link is uh, right there on the screen. But you can support us as well by going to our patron, becoming a patron. How do you become a patron? Politicsandright.com slash patron. That's spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Or... You can support us at PayPal, politicsandright.com slash PayPal. Folks, I know you have many places that you have the opportunity to go to. 
but you're here with us at Politics Done Right. I really appreciate you. Let's keep it going. We have a lot of work to do. I can't. I go for my second COVID injection on Saturday, and after that second injection, I will actually go out and start doing more things on the outside. After two weeks from then, I have to get my gear back up. Though I got to get all my my remote stuff and all of that. Run. I used to go into like restaurants sometimes and 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 do a do a show there or whatever. I got to start getting my mobile gear back up together, uh, tested and all that good stuff because I want to be out there. I want to be where our great activists are throughout the country. Uh, I don't know if we're going to have a net roots this year, but we'll see. But anyhow, 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 anyhow. Oh, you get your second on the 16th. That's great, British MCP. What you want? Hayes, let's see. Hayes says... The U.S. is responsible for about 15% of the world emissions, more if you consider how much we import. Well, I mean, uh, you also have to remember that we were built. United States, United Kingdom, and Western countries, a lot of that carbon in the air right now, most of it was produced by these Western countries. So if we want to other countries to be on board, we have to kind of pay them not to throw the same amount that we threw over the last several centuries, right? You know what's an interesting thing? Honesty and also information. If we just were able to let people know the truth. My name is Egberto Willies. This is Politics Done Right, and you know how I end this baby. I am what? Out! We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.